Okay, greetings everyone, this is First in 2073 with the next episode of Geopolitical Simulator 4, Power and Revolution, playing All Roads Lead to Delhi, India campaign, and I'm looking into Central Asia more, and I'm looking at some conflicts that are emerging here, or that have emerged, um, in the Himalayan mountains, or the Hindu Kush mountain, part of the Himalayan mountain range. Uh, and I was looking to intervene in Afghanistan uh, politics, particularly looking um, at constructing two bases in Afghanistan, one air base, one land base, and possibly intervening uh, and helping them put down this Mujahideen resistance with all these different camps they have here, um, down in, I believe, like the Kandahar region. Uh, if you look here at their numbers, they've got... About 9 million sympathizers, 24,000 fighters, uh, 254 mercenaries, 36 tanks, and 112 armed vehicles, uh, armed pickup trucks. Uh, the Afghans already seem pretty engaged, and I was going to try to support them with air power, possibly sending commandos and helicopters to take them out. Um, and uh, sort of look to build up Afghanistan as a, pretty, as a uh, significant Central Asian ally, possibly... Uh, sort of like a bulwark or um, a counter to Pakistani uh, aggression or power influence in the region. Uh, we could, if we had Afghanistan on our side, we could uh, bring a two-front war against Pakistan. Interesting enough, uh, Iran is also uh, in our favor here, light green. Perhaps we can bring them in as well, but i got to be careful with uh, forging alliances with Iran because that might upset United States and Western Europeans, so we have to watch out for that one. Uh, better to incorporate Afghanistan, and I believe the United States has bases in Afghanistan. Well, yeah, there's a military camp there, so they are supporting them. So if we join uh, in their support, maybe that'll help align the United States more with us strategically. Uh, and as I was looking into this in between episodes, I noticed something. Uh, there's a conflict between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, it's not like the Mujahideen conflict. Mujahideen conflict is a raging conflict uh, between Afghanistan and the Mujahideen. It is pretty much an official declaration of war, and I have options here on how to react. I can declare war on one of the two parties, go to war, um, attack one of the parties. I think probably going to do that to support Afghanistan. I don't need to capture any territory there, but we're going to wait till we have better deployment in Afghanistan before we do that. Um, but this conflict here, Afghan-Pakistan conflict, is already going on. Uh, I don't have options on how to react, however, because it is a latent conflict. It's something new I've been I've encountered in the game, a new concept. The latent conflict is not actually an official declaration of war, uh, but there is hostility uh, between the two, and it doesn't look like there's been any combat yet. I don't think um, Pakistan has entered their territory. However, if you look, the Pakistanis have mobilized large forces in the region and uh, looks like they are are close to the Afghan border so it looks like they are poised there's some more uh, tanks down there 29 tanks uh, across to that border uh, they may be supporting the Mujahideen financially uh, we don't know that um, but they are most likely would be and it looks like the Mujahideen have captured a number of cities here so numerous cities there's Kandahar uh, other regions here so uh, I'm going to act as a, I'm going to prepare to act as sort of a, a counterbalance to the uh, Pakistani aggression in Afghanistan. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up another meeting with Afghanistan at the start. And we will seek an alliance. Uh, maybe an alliance with Afghanistan might uh, push Pakistani, Pakistan to resolve the conflict, the latent conflict. And uh, maybe that can uh, deter some of their aggression in the area, I'm hoping. And I'm hoping to get a couple more military bases out of that treaty. I think currently we have a treaty agreement with Afghanistan, which allows for, can we look it up? I believe our current treaty agreement with Afghanistan allows for, is a support agreement, allowing for four different bases. We are building two. I was going to try to deploy some commandos, because uh, I believe, I'm not sure if commandos can do it or not, but I want to see at least if commandos can actually... I don't know where I'm going to get these commandos from. Some place right here. I want to see if commandos can actually... Um, 
build military camps. No target, no target. I can't move them in there because I don't have a target. Okay, so I can't just deploy them. Uh, can I just deploy troops? There are 100,000 troops here. Can I deploy, let's say, 10,000 troops? Oh, I gotta do it differently, don't I? Allocate. If I allocate, I think they... No, I would have to allocate towards an airbase. Alright, so I'm just gonna hold on that one right now, because I don't want to go through Pakistani territory with my uh, soldiers yet. <laughs> yet, I say yet. And I did take a close look at Pakistan. Uh, just take a look. We're gonna analyze it real quick. I'm gonna give you a breakdown. Well, first, let's go here, actually. Uh, if you click on Pakistan, and we can get a nice breakdown between Pakistan and India. Population 223 million, uh, 479 billion GDP. Not a very good GDP compared to their population. Uh, GDP per capita is half of ours. And I am going to point this out now. If I do go into conflict with Pakistan, I do not have intentions to annex Pakistan into India. Uh, what I'm planning on doing instead is making it a colony. And I know there's probably some... Uh, hawks out there, some uh, GPS-4 hawks that want me to just incorporate everything and go on a conquest rampage, um, but as far as goals are concerned, uh, and just to look at your army, uh, our army is almost three times the size of theirs. They do have nuclear, eight more nuclear weapons than we do, so I'm hoping it doesn't unfold into a nuclear conflict, try to avoid that, uh, but for the hawks out there, uh, why I'm not going to uh, annex Pakistan, there's numerous reasons. Uh, one, I don't want to deal with that. One, I don't want to pay for the damage that I'm going to do to Pakistan if we end up in conflict. And I've mapped out a, a strategic air campaign um, on how to take out Pakistan. Uh, two, uh, I don't want to incorporate all their economic difficulties with the large population. Uh, I don't want to incorporate their population, which would A, uh, lead to the economic plague uh, and make the economic issues more, making our public services cost more as well as dealing with a large population with not very well, that's, that's in uh, abject poverty almost. Um, and, and our economy is doing very well as it is. I don't need to bring in uh, any more issues. Maybe it'll lower inflation, I don't know. I don't need to bring in Pakistan uh, economically. Also religion. Uh, Pakistan is Muslim and there's a large Hindu population. I don't need internal social or political strife going on in India. And who knows what new terrorist groups might emerge if I annex Pakistan. So that's another reason. Uh, third reason is um, I'm actually interested in investigating what I can do with uh, colonies. I know that uh, you can't enter in diplomatic relations with them. I've had some experience with them in the past. Um, but I also want to see what we can do as far as influence. Can I... Uh, Will it be easier to build roads, railroads, possibly pipelines through Pakistani territory to connect with Afghanistan and Kabul and possibly from there extend into our Central Asian uh, allies here and try to uh, unite that uh, Cato agreement, bring, bring more countries into that Cato uh, Central Asian Trade Agreement organization. Uh, also, can I build pipelines? Also, will they be willing to join us in war, too? Uh, so these are things that I'm sort of interested I think they automatically join us in war if they become a colony. So feel free to post down below comments on colonies. I know people probably hate it in this game because it really doesn't give you a lot of influence over the country as it would in other games uh, or as it would likely do. Um, but if we do go to war with Pakistan, it's going to be um, to make them a colony not to annex them. Territories I will annex again, Sri Lanka, Maldives, but Pakistan is going to be a colony. Um, uh, Bangladesh will also probably be a colony too if I end up doing that, uh, if that ends up happening. But I just want to check out, show you guys some military uh, information too, as far as military power index. Uh, Pakistan is sixth, so they are, uh, but we have like double there. I don't know what this, that says prison population. Why does that say prison population? I don't know why that says prison population. I think that's a. Uh... What? That's a glitch in the game because those are the tank numbers. Um, 4,000 tanks compared to 40. About 4,000 tanks in Pakistan. Pretty even tank numbers. Um, 
security, which I wanted to look into. I wonder if Secret Service agents. Are you serious? This is like a bug, I think. Let's check this out. Aircraft carriers. Yeah, definitely a bug. Because that says drones. We have one aircraft carrier. They have, they have definitely more than 11 aircraft carriers. So I think the, what I click on is accurate. Um, Pakistan doesn't have any aircraft carriers. This is this is a bug for some reason. Maybe the new patch will fix it. I haven't loaded the new patch in a while because when I do, I think it erases my game. Uh, but the number I'm really interested in here, actually, I'm interested in this number too. 67. First, Pakistan is barely on the list. Let's see what we got here. 11. So our naval power is far superior to Pakistan. Navally, we're far superior to Pakistan. Um, but the other thing that's even more important than naval advantage is um, this number right here, how many fighter planes we have. And we've got 2,000 fighter planes compared to Pakistan's 411. So I'm going to launch a, if, if conflict does break out between us and Pakistan, I'm going to launch a massive air campaign against the Pakistanis. Uh, and first priority when you launch an air campaign is to gain air superiority. So I've looked at all the number of bases, that air bases that the Pakistanis have. And it looks like they have a total of 13 air bases, mostly concentrated in the north. Um, and I've assigned targets. I have my air bases, sort of. Uh, each air base that I have in the region, I'm going to fill up with... Uh, 300 fighters, and I'm going to launch 100 fighters against each one of these air bases immediately. So I'm going to have to redeploy additional aircraft uh, to the Pakistani border, and uh, we're going to take out their air superiority. That's going to be step one. Uh, step two is going to be to knock out their ports, but I'm going to have to deploy, redeploy my navy along the coast. There's about six Pakistani ports with those 67... Uh, Destroy cruisers. I guess I can sign 10 cruisers to each port and just knock them out. I'll probably lay the subs <coughs> right along this coast here. Uh, I don't know if we'll move them into <coughs> Pakistani waters. We'll probably lay them along the border. And uh, cruisers will be behind, and my aircraft carrier will be a little deeper into the, Pac into the Arabian Sea. That's my strategy there. Uh, yes, submarine, six cruisers. We can already start deploying some of these cruisers. Deploy that right there. And it looks like we're going to end up going through their water, so maybe that will uh, raise some tensions a little bit, apply a little pressure. Cruisers, do I have here? Seven cruisers. Yeah, let's go ahead and drop them right there. Right, so we're starting cruiser deployment immediately. No cruisers there. These are ports, they don't have. There's naval base. Five cruisers. One thing we're definitely gonna need to do is build, buy more missiles. All right, each cruiser group will be assigned. Each only six of them. Because each group will be assigned to a different naval base to just bombard constantly. Oh, and I should probably put some in there. So we're moving ourselves away from uh, pressuring Sri Lanka and redeploying our forces against Pakistan, or preparing for an engagement against Pakistan, because uh, we're trying to support Afghanistan and gain more regional allies in the area. And we're also going to move um, satellites into the region as well. Oh, I have more down here, don't I? There we go. Ten cruisers, good. I don't know where my aircraft carrier is, if it's returned yet. Uh, let's check that out. Where is the carrier? It should have landed here, right? There it is. I should get more submarines. I need more submarines. Put them into the Arabian Sea. And we will deploy the cruisers to support them. As well as submarines. Oh, that's a port. 
seven cruisers, two conventional submarines. Let's send all our submarines to this naval base and see what type of groups we can get. I don't have a lot of submarines. Send the majority of our submarines to naval bases. That'll be enough for now. Let's see here. Two conventional subs. Yeah, that's enough for now. Um, so that should cover our naval deployment. Um, so we'll hit the, the port strikes are going to be second. Air bases will be first. Port strikes will be second. Second tier of the attack. Third tier is army bases. Now, the objective will be to capture the capital, and that is Islamabad. So, uh, looks like this base right here is the location. And the plan is, from this base, we've got 104,000 soldiers, we're going to deploy all of them immediately. Uh, 700 tanks, they will be deployed directly towards Islamabad. Our missile launchers will be used to strike MILB-5, uh, Pakistani base. And um, other military bases will be hit, and military forces will be hit with a uh, second wave of airstrikes after we eliminate all the air bases. And we're also going to plan on going after some of these power plants, uh, the solar plant there, power plant there. I can hit them with commandos right away. So that's my uh, basic strategy against uh, Pakistan. I'm also going to launch a strike on this military base from this one. So that's what we're going to do, and now in the meantime, it's time for me to de redeploy some aircraft. Let's see here. Fighters, 52 fighters. Where are my fighters? I think I should have, I probably have a lot in the south, right? Uh, I definitely need to find more fighters. I might do this in the intermission. We're going to start moving some fighters We're over. going to violate the territories of one or several other nations. Do you confirm? No. Fifty-two fighters. Start moving them. There we go. 173 fighters. That's a lot. Thirty-four fighters, not too many there. Air bases. Only two air bases in the south. Fifty fighters. And Forty fighters. I'm gonna pull these fifty fighters out of here. Might be time to make another deal with the Russians for most some more fighter aircraft. A lot of air bases out here. 81 fighters. Yeah, let's send them there. We are going to violate no way. Oh, we're going through Bangladesh. Alright, let's pull the fighters out of these bases then. We are going to violate Jeez. Either way you're gonna violate somebody's airspace. How do I get around this without violating airspace? No, I'm just gonna have to do it. We are going to violate. Sure, it's Bangladesh. Not a big issue. Oh, 150 fighters. Yeah, we need all those. For certain. I don't want to violate Nepal's airspace. Bangladesh. We are going to no violate. No problem. It's going to increase tension with Bangladesh, which is not my intention. What do you have? 
172. All right, we'll see if we can do it with just the ones we have there. We'll get them all in the region, and then I'll redeploy them from there. And then the other option, the next uh, thing I have to do is find my satellites. Where are the rest of my satellites? There's a way I looked it up before where I could find where my satellites are. Don't remember how I did that. I go into here. Where are those satellites? They are not on the list. I forgot how to do the satellites. There's got to be a way to do it somehow. Well, if anything, let's start moving the satellite, these satellites. Into, above, uh, Pakistani airspace. There should be another four satellites somewhere. Where do I look them up? There's one. Now that's an airplane. Where are the rest of my satellites? There was a way to do this, and I can't remember. Bummer. I'll have to get back to that. I do want the satellites in the area. Alright, I've been talking a lot here, and I've made a lot of moves without any uh, time being ticked off, so let's see what's going on here. Our aircraft should definitely be moving. There it is. Indignation. They are upset that we violated their airspace. Oh well. Take a look at the fighters. There they are. They're all in route. Redeploying fighters to the Pakistani front and meeting with Botswana. I'll accept that. Care for refugees. Perspective analysis coupled with the brand I'm not interested in working with them. Our naval forces are en route. There they are. Massive movements. That should be alarming to the Pakistanis. Alright, don't worry about that. I wish I could send them a message like, you know, back off of Afghanistan or something like that. That would be cool if you could, if that would be a uh, diplomatic option in the game, I think. Well, right now, deploy redeployment. First uh, phases of redeployment, these uh, military bases. Ah. Not at the moment, not yet. They've uh, been under construction for 25 days. Still a long way to go. Where are you going? Nepal indignation. Stop it. Ah, oh, no. Maybe these airbases are full. No fighters there. Turn around. No, stop it. Get off that. Ugh. Oh, they're really pissed at us now. Great. Maybe we'll have a war with uh, Nepal before this thing starts. Oh my god. Maybe if I reallocated them, it would be better. It would have been a better option. Alright, so that is a complete failure. 210 fighters I wanted to get out of there. I 
And now they're going back. Great, right through Nepal airspace. The theory... Sure, we'll approach them. Our governmental cell informs Ooh, me that the minister has targeting had... China. Keep going, get through there. Nepal is pissed. They are red and they are hostile. We got all, we got all the fighters out of there. All right, hopefully that's that. That's a lot, it seems like a lot. Come on, tell me we're good. Tell me we're good. Excellent. How many fighters do we have there? 217 fighters. All right, we can definitely deploy, redeploy some of them. So there's five air bases. Ambassador Warrior with Pakistan. My government wishes to express concern about warships cruising close to our territorial waters. We firmly demand that you proceed, divert them further away. Good. We want to increase tensions with Pakistan. And Nepal, tensions relaxed. Excellent. Excellent. Just put them right there. Okay. And now the meeting with the Afghans. Uh, no. Afghan meeting. Okay. Sure. Dark and strong, please. Very good. Good relations with him. Compliment. Very kind. And let's renegotiate this military alliance. Let's first let's see if I can just get two more bases. They refuse. Okay, renegotiate. Let's see. Two bases for two bases. They refuse. Alright, now. Uh, alliance. For two bases. They refuse. Hope I don't refuse the alliance altogether. Uh, let's just go alliance. Ah, oh, damn. They refuse the alliance. Maybe I should have done that differently. Alliance for two bases. They refused. Let's see if I can get the alliance agreement and offer two bases. And they refused that. Alright, so we're not going to be able to improve relations with Afghanistan at all. We'll just have to wait. Um, but pressure is being applied. And one thing I could do is um, join in the conflict, I guess against the Mujahideen and then maybe uh, they'll be more inclined to approach us. Right now they're they're light green, they're not dark green. So I probably could send more aid there. Let's start by looking to send more aid to Afghanistan and they have a famine. International donations up to five billion dollars. Meeting with Botswana. What the Good heck is morning. this? Good morning! I didn't come empty hand. I don't want to hear nonsense, garbage, nickel. Nickel, nickel, nickel. Actually, we need nickel. I'll take nickel, actually. But at a much lower price than this. I'm going to negotiate for this one. Yeah. I don't care. Get out of here. Alright, so... $5 billion in aid have been sent for famine. We could double the aid. And then maybe... That will improve relations with Afghanistan enough to get them. Yes. Pause. Now they're dark green. Now let's have another meeting. Meeting request. Again, $5 billion in aid for your famine situation. And I think it's been about 30 minutes here, right? Alright, so India-Pakistan conflict, I think we covered that in a lot of 30 minutes, hasn't it? 
that's been about 30 minutes. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Don't forget to uh, like the video if you did. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Also, check the description down below if you'd like to support me on Patreon and support uh, new video game Plutocracy uh, Indiegogo campaign. In link in the description below. Very interesting game on wealth, intrigue, and power, 19th century United States uh, during the Gilded Age. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next episode.